Jesse Krebs here, founder and head instructor for Owl Skills, where we make wilder women. Glad you could join me. I've selected a few bits and pieces from my classes that you can absorb and take with you out into the wilderness. So let's go play. Let's see how to do a better survival bracelet. I call this one a better survival bracelet because it comes apart very easily and it's very easy to make. It can be made very rapidly and it, there's no other hasps or plastic bits or anything involved with it. So I really like it for those purposes. It's just the 550 cord or the paracord. And the way we do it is first we're gonna make some kind of a hasp or begin the bracelet and then we're gonna weave it and then we'll have some kind of a finish and a nice finished button. Usually it's an Ashley knot that we'll finish with to make a nice um, connection for the hasp at the end. So to start this, you find about the center of your line and this one's about six feet or so. You can see I've got about three feet right there. So for a typical adult, I think that's about the right length. And then I find the center of that, and I'm going to, right at that point where I found the center, I'm going to make a slip loop. So I'm rolling this over, one side over. It doesn't matter because they're the same length approximately. And the one that's on top, I'm going to push up from underneath and make a little slip loop. And then I can feed that down until it's about the size, about the diameter of a pencil approximately. Because the knot that we're going to do at the end needs to be able to fit through here, but not be too tight. It can't be too tight and it can't be too loose or the, it won't hold very well. Once we have our slip loop, which is going to be our hasp, I'm going to flip the whole thing over. And it doesn't really matter which side. I'm going to take the side that slips and I'm going to roll it over to make an underhand loop. And once I've done that, now I'm going to take a bite from the other side and place it inside that underhand loop and feed that underhand loop down until it tightens nice and secure around the bite. And now that I have that, the whole premise of this from here on out is take a bite from the side that doesn't slide, doesn't move, and put it into the one that does slide and cinch the one that slides down around it. So the side doesn't slide, I'm going to take a bite, put it up into the side that slides, and then feed that side that slides down. And I just tighten all this up. So I'm going to pull, 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 pull. Now the opposite side slides. Now this one will slide and this one doesn't. Side that doesn't slide, take a bite, put it into the side that does, and tighten that down. And I pull, 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 pull. And that really makes sure everything nice is nice and tight. Side that doesn't slide. And I continue that process. It does sometimes want to roll, so I just keep this really flat when I'm doing it. I don't let it roll or twist on me. I'm also coming in from the front every time. You could come in from the back, whichever. But I find it makes a nice weave when you stay consistent with that as well. So side that doesn't slide into the side that does, and I just keep going. So this one I don't even really need to look at. It can be really fast and easy, which I really like. And I've used this before to replace like a hat band on a hat with something that's a little more utilitarian. Since what's used as a hat band right now is just some pieces of leather, which is fine. But 550 cord, because it can break down into eight pieces, the outer sheath, and seven pieces of inner core, that's really nice. That's a lot of rope, right? Especially if I do, let's say, you know, it would probably be close to 20 feet or so to do one all the way around my hat. So if I did that and break that down into eight pieces, that's a lot of line. So now I've got my system going on. Okay, so I just put, this is my next loop, and I could fold this up, and I'm getting pretty short. And if I want to make a really nice loop here, or make a nice um, clasp, then I want enough line left over to be able to do that and make it pretty pretty nicely. So that last loop, when I've got a fair amount of line left, I pull that through. And I also want to make sure, if I do this, that I can wrap it around my wrist and that that's going to meet up really nicely right there. So you can see one of the lines, when I finish this, I just pulled it through, 
one line is coming out almost straight and the other one's coming backwards. So what I would do is snip this line. So the one that's going backwards toward my loop, my initial starting point, I'm gonna trim that about a quarter inch or so from where it meets the, the actual bracelet. I'm just gonna trim that off. And now I have this little bit left over. So how you melt this is a little, little bit tricky, but it's not, it's not horrible if you figure it out. So I'm pulling it really tight initially and trying to kind of lift it up and keep it away from the other line around it. The main thing I want to do is make a little mushroom here and not let it touch the rest of the materials. I want to just mushroom it out so it doesn't want to go out easily. It stays together until I intentionally want to undo the bracelet. So now I'm going to light it and get it so the whole thing is really nice and gooey. And I'm going to take that and flatten it with the edge of my lighter. Once I'm sure it's nice and cool, I'll break that off. So now you can see it's really flattened, but some of this is really thin and long and it might be a little bit jagged. So once it's been flattened, I take the lighter one more time and just soften those kind of edges and they'll pull back in a little bit. So now you can see it's kind of flattened on the edge and now when I pull this, it pulls that up so it meets the rest of it but it doesn't actually soak in. So now with this other end, I'm gonna make a little Ashley's. Make an overhand, reach up from underneath and grab a bite of the part that's closest to the bracelet. So this is a little running loop that I've just made and I'm gonna keep it really loose. And then I'm gonna take the tail and put it inside that little running loop. So I'm gonna filter this down a little bit and put just the tail back in there. And so now when I tighten all this down, it's gonna make a, a nice little loop, but I wanna keep this as close to this as possible. I just want a teeny tiny gap between the knot and the actual bracelet. So I'll need to filter this down. So first I'm gonna get the running loop. I'm gonna pull that through and work it a little bit. And then when I tighten it, it'll be a nice three-pronged loop is basically what it ends up looking like. So you just have to keep working it until you get it in the right position. And then once you do, it's really easy to just pop that through your initial clasp and that, your hasp, and that makes it all nice and neat. And so now to put this on, I can simply slip this through here. So a little hard to do one-handed. It's nice to have a friend to help you with. But I can run the knot through and pull the main part of the knot through. So I'm working through there. And that way I know it's not coming off unless I want it to. The downside if you just do like an overhand or even a figure eight, it tends to want to slip out and we don't want that. So, so we'll work them through. And so now I can simply trim that and I've got my bracelet, yay. <laughs> so now let's say I need this bracelet. I'm ready to go. Part of what I like about this one is I call it the better survival bracelet because it comes undone very easily. So they've done studies on typical humans trying to get done the ones that you typically buy in the store, which is usually a cobra weave, and those can take up to five minutes uh, for folks to get back undone. So this one, I undo that initial clasp. I have it out. I can push a little bit just to get this loosened right, and get this kind of loosened up. So I pull that little gap here where the Ashley's knot is. I'm gonna slide that down, and then I can work that through and loosen this. And by doing that, now this mushroom part can literally just be popped through. No big deal, right, so that's done. Now I pull the mushroom out of the next loop that it's in, and then I just pull. Right, take out the Ashley's if I need to, and I'm good to go. I'm ready to use it for whatever it is I need to use it. And the Ashley's was just a, a running loop with the, the tail stuck in. So now I'm ready to have my line. I can snip the ends and take out the inner core and use it for whatever I want. I'm ready to go. Thanks for watching. I hope you got some good things you can take with you out to the wilderness. If you'd like to come to in-person classes, come join me at OwlSkills, OwlSkills.com, or you can check me out on Masterclass. And if you're looking for something a little more just entertainment, sitting on the couch eating some popcorn kind of thing, 
I'll see you on season nine of Alone. Go play.